Hi and welcome to this video where I've made a bit more progress on the Dacia Sandero. So what I've done is I've removed the air filter, the inlet manifold and the valve cover. So if we look at this camera here we can see what we are now at. We can see the valves um, and the rockers and everything on the engine. Now one thing that did strike me was I did try cranking the engine over and I would have thought oil would have come out of these points here to lubricate the um, valve springs. Now on cranking the engine over, no oil has come out. Now I don't know whether it should come out or there's not enough pressure just turning the engine over to do that, I don't know. That's one thing that's making me wonder, is this issue or a lack of oil getting to the top of the engine? Because obviously if no oil got to the top, it would be a lot noisier than if everything was getting nicely lubricated, which would obviously dull the sound down and everything else. Could this be something to do with the oil not getting to the top of the engine? So in the next video, I'm wondering whether to actually take the sump off, perhaps the oil filter, just check whether there's oil getting up there. I probably should have done an oil pressure test um, before I took it all apart, but that's the side. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you can give it a thumbs up, that'd be much appreciated and like and subscribe. And as always, have a good weekend. So the first thing to do is remove the air filter housing, which we have seen a couple of times now in the previous videos. But for the sake of being thorough, I'll still include those here. So we'll quickly crack on with this. So as usual, it's unclipped the gearbox breather hose which is there on the right hand side of the air filter housing and then we've also got a breather pipe there on the top to pull off and then using a seven millimeter socket just need to undo that jubilee clip like so so there's also a pipe at the front there that's missing on my car which i'm removing fictitiously and then we can just lift up the air filter housing and push it to the right and away it goes Okay, quick look at that. Always remember there's photos at the end of my videos showing every part as I do the job. Now we're also going to need to disconnect the battery. So using a 10mm socket, remove the battery negative lead and just pop that safely to one side so it can't accidentally reconnect itself. Okay, so with that done, we can now go on to removing the air intake ancillaries. So there's quite a few things we've got to remove. So we'll start here with a 10 millimeter socket. Just remove the self-tapping screw for the oil filler neck tube. So that's actually going down there into the valve cover. There's also a cable attached to it, so you may need to unclip that. So having a quick look there at the tube. I'm going to put the screw back there just to keep it there for safe. And what we've also got to do is disconnect the fuel line. So I suggest you wear eye protection because it is under pressure. And we just need to squeeze the two green sides in. And there we are, the petrol's now coming out. So be a bit careful there. So I'll just try and demonstrate that, that if you squeeze the two sides in how that actually operates. Okay, so that's now the petrol disconnected. It's worth putting a little tube back on there just to protect that so that nothing manages to get inside there into the fuel rail. Now if we go around to the back of the inlet manifold we've got an evaporative emissions hose which needs to be disconnected. So again that's one of those where you squeeze the sides in and just release that. And then we need to move on to the centre one which is the brake servo vacuum hose. So pop that one off and then we've got a couple of breather hoses here which also need to be pulled off like so. And then we can just pop that out of the side or out of the way. Okay, so next we need to remove all the spark plug leads and thankfully they are numbered but if they're not numbered now might be a good time to actually number them. And always remember that cylinder number one is at the flywheel side not the timing belt side which is normally the case so that's cylinder four now we're just disconnecting there 
Okay, so now onto electrical connectors. We've got to disconnect the map sensor. There we are. So that stands for manifold absolute pressure sensor. Also get rid of the dipstick. I get that to one side. That gives my just mainly for the camera to get better access to here so we can disconnect the air temperature sensor. I want the camera to see how that's that's held on with a metal clip. So we we'll pop that out. And we've also got to disconnect the wiring loom from down there. And then if we move on to the back, we've got the connector for the throttle body. So that's one of those where you just squeeze it at the back, push it in at the back. It's quite difficult to actually remove. But there we are. Pop that to one side. And then we've also got an electrical connector there for the fuel injectors on the fuel rail. So we just take that off and also pop that to one side. So we'll have a look at a few photos quickly of the inlet manifold. So there it is. There's the top three screws and the eight screws at the bottom that we now need to undo. Okay, so this can be quite tricky. So we we'll start with the top, which is three E8 screws, which are quite long. They're about 45 millimeters long. We get those out of the way. So I'm cheating now. I'm using the air tools because this is quite time consuming. And it's actually very awkward to actually get those manifold screws out from the front. Now what you will need to do is use a 10 millimeter spanner just to remove the connector on the starter motor solenoid because that cable is right in the way of one of the screws. So I'll speed this up, I won't show all this part, but needless to say you've got to remove all eight screws that are about 30 millimeters long and that's with the 10 millimeter socket. And then once they're all out, you should better just remove the inlet manifold. So make sure you don't undo the two black ones, which I did originally, because they're actually holding the fuel rail to the manifold. But here we go, it's now free to come away. So it's a little bit oily there around the inlets. But you can see the actual screws. So it's eight screws at the bottom there. Okay, and I've put these screws back in, you see. So I actually took these two screws out and they're self-tapping screws. So I thought I'd just show that in the video because obviously I made a mistake there removing them. So pop those back in. And then we can have a quick look at the inlet manifold. It's quite a compact sort of built device. It's quite nice and tidy really. Okay then. So we'll put that to one side now. So we have got oil leaking there. So those seals need to be done. So the next thing is to remove the ignition coil pack. Those. So for this it's a Torx 30 and there's four screws. So pop those out. There's also an electrical connector there on the left. So just unplug that. And you've got a couple again at the back of it, like so. So thankfully the HD leads are sort of in line with the cylinders that they go to. So you shouldn't really better get this wrong when you come to refitting. So I'll just briefly show that. You see cylinder four there, you can clearly see is in the straight line for cylinder four. So there we are, that's the coil pack removed. Okay, so the next thing to do now is to actually remove the valve cover. And I'll just show a photo here of the different screws so that you can see what's actually involved. So we'll start by just pulling off the wiring loom at the back of the valve cover, like so. And again, I'll speed most of this up because there's no need to see me removing every screw. So it's a 10 millimetre socket there for the 12 screws. There's quite a few variations of this cover. Um, some are metal, 
obviously this one's plastic um, now logically you would undo these screws in the opposite sequence to how you fit them um, and I have included a sort of photo of that I'll put one up now just in the corner but this photo is also available at the end of the video so and here we go here's the valve cover coming away now now it's also clipped on there at the back so you may need to just cut the cable tie there and there we go the valve cover is now away so you've got access to the valves so we've got a little bit of mayonnaise in there but that's probably just from cold cold weather and a little bit of water dribbling down there that could be from washing the engine as the spark plug seals probably aren't working now okay so we'll pop that to one side now we'll take a little look at the actual rockers that operate the valves so you can see they're all adjustable with a screwdriver and a small spanner so i couldn't see anything obviously wrong here note the oil on the top of those little sort of barrel protrusions down by the tappets because when I was turning the engine over I didn't see any oil coming out of those perhaps that only comes out when it's under you know actually revving properly okay so a little bit of torque information here for the valve cover and as usual we'll put some reference photographs in now that you can pause to view for longer So you've been watching part four of diagnosing the loud knocking sound on this 2014 Dacia Sandero with the D4F engine. And thank you for watching and supporting my channel. Please like and subscribe. And this video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in September 2023. I can also be found on Instagram, Facebook and X as Coats and Gators.